Welcome to LeaderCast, episode 216. You're listening to LeaderCast, Transforming Missions podcast with Tim Bias and Sarah Thomas, providing you with resources to navigate the challenges and opportunities of courageous, Christ-centered leaders. Today we're going to explore leaving a legacy of hope by looking at the legacy of a few people we think you'll know, and then we're going to turn the tables on you. (laughs) But before we dive in, let me remind you that you can find show notes and links to anything that we talk about in this episode at transformingmission.org forward slash 216. Sarah, as I think about leaving a legacy of hope, as we're recording this, Betty White would have celebrated her 100th birthday, actually on the same day my wife celebrated her birthday. But as you already know, she died just short of her 100th celebration. She was a beloved actress and comic. Her humor and candor brought laughter and joy to people's lives. But Sarah, I think you have something about hope with Betty. The show that I saw her on the most was Golden Girls. And I mean, she was just a stitch. But following her death, I noticed more posts on social media saying something like this. Betty White still being alive gave me hope in the midst of our uncertainty. Or, I had hope while Betty White was alive. There was something about her longevity, her candor, and her humor that inspired people. There were even people who looked at the number of leap years that she lived and added those days to her life and concluded that, yes, she did make it to 100 years old. But the reason that I really bring her up is this. Someone wrote this about her legacy. Live to 100 and have people say, it still wasn't long enough. Betty White has left a legacy of hope. And today we want to explore what it means to leave a legacy of hope. Now, maybe Betty White did that for you. Or maybe it's someone else like Martin Luther King Jr. Many people quoting Dr. King, well, let's just put it this way. I remember when he was assassinated. And I remember how hated he was by so many people. And I have a feeling that there are people today who uh, quote him and hold him high, who at the same time did not like him. And so his daughter said many people, quoting Dr. King, didn't even like him when he was alive. Yet, despite the ridicule, the arrest, the imprisonment, he embodied hope, and his legacy lives on, wouldn't you say, Sarah? Oh, absolutely. And and I think sometimes the sound bites that are filled with hope from people's larger presence in life and the legacy that they leave, you know, it gets, it gets boiled down to nothing more than sound bites and hearing his daughter make that comment about people not liking him when he was alive. And yet now you're quoting him. That's what, that's what it, that's what runs through my mind. And, and I'm not sure that that is hope. That that creates hope, simply quoting someone. But I don't know how you can look at Martin Luther King Jr.'s life and not see and experience hope. I think about fast-forwarding, not that I'm trying to push time, fast-forward 10 years down the road as we reflect on this time that we've lived through in the pandemic. And And there are some things that I think as humans, we just go about doing because we have to, but we don't really stop and think about it. And at a distance, we're going to look back and go, wow, this person really was filled with hope. This is what they did every single day throughout the pandemic. This is how they, you know, this is how they lived. And I think there will be stories from this time that will that will point to hope, but because we're living in the midst of it, 
we can't we can't yet see it. There's not enough distance there. And so I jumped to someone um, like Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who, you know, another person, yes, in, in prison, standing up for his his beliefs, standing up against Hitler. And and yet different people think different things about what his legacy actually was. And maybe some of that comes from how you were introduced to him. When I first read Bonhoeffer, it was either The Cost of Discipleship or Life Together. And I think it was Life Together. And so it was really, what is community? But it was, what is community in a really hard place? I think it's interesting that Martin Luther King once said that Bonhoeffer had influenced him. There were three people that he mentioned very clearly. One was Gandhi, one was Bonhoeffer, and then the other was Rosa Parks. Martin Luther King said they impacted his life. They left a legacy for him. And so we're talking about Bonhoeffer and King leaving a legacy for us. Hearing you say that, you know, it raises the question, who has left a legacy that inspires you? But we're not going to go there just yet. So whether the ripples of hope are vast and wide or they're contained within a family unit, there is a reason that hope-filled legacies endure. Each of the individuals we named in their own way had a life focus or goal. They claimed agency in the midst of challenging circumstances. They found different and varied paths to achieve their goals. And that's what hope is. They they knew where they were heading. They stayed focused on it. And they did it in lots of different ways at different points in their life. And probably for Martin Luther King Jr. and Bonhoeffer, had they been able to live longer lives, we would have even more examples of how that happened. So all of that leads us to the question, whose legacy inspires you? to be a hope-filled leader. And maybe it's not the big names that we've talked about. We've brought them up so that there are people that you might relate to and I'd have at some point in your journey inspired you and inspired a like a hope-filled legacy in your life. But maybe it's someone that is much closer to you. So Tim, who whose legacy inspires you to be a hope-filled leader? Well, Sarah, I like that question and I want to answer it, but if if we if I were able to pan the wall behind me, you would have some of my heroes. I like Martin Luther King, who left the legacy of, of course, and there's Gandhi, there's Mother Teresa, they're they're all there. John Wesley, I think if if people could see the the picture that's behind me. Those were all people that have left a legacy uh, that shaped my life. But then there are people like I had in school. I think all of us who've who've been a part of education can go back to a professor or someone and and I would I would readily just say that one of the people that's had a greatest impact upon my life was Fred Craddock. George Morris, both both he and Craddock had an influence and have left a legacy. But to get more to your question, just some everyday people. I, I just think of people who I, I've known in every church, there's someone, and if I'm fortunate, maybe there are two someones who I can go back and think about who I say, you know, I wouldn't be who I am today if it weren't for what they've given um, given to me. And I'll I'll just mention one. He and I were about the same age. He was just a little younger. It was in Peoria. And he was a member of the congregation. He was a physician, but he asked every one of his patients, he said, are you a praying person? And he said, if you're not, try it sometime. It'll help your attitude. He, he oftentimes would ask me, he said, we don't have a map to our church. He said, if you just had a map to the church, he said, I'd hand them out to all my patients just so they'd know to get to the church. He's probably one of the few people that ever knew that had the gift of of evangelism, really, that warm, inviting, reaching out kind of thing. He has impacted my life. I cannot hear the the, the hymn 
I come to the garden alone without thinking about Paul. But yet he's not the only one that's left that kind of legacy. You know, every time, every time you'd see Paul and you'd say, how you doing? And he said, fantastic. It's just wonderful. Couldn't be any better. And he said it in this kind of way that you wanted to say, well, what's going on? And if you ask him, he'd always say, you know, God's really good. But Sarah, I know you've got one or two people too that just have impacted you. Yeah, hearing you name those individuals, part of what I'm drawing out of the people that you named is they either form you and shape you in some way. They teach you. They teach you something about who you are. They teach you something about God. They they help you learn something about life. Or often there's a struggle that they have experienced in life, and sometimes that's a financial struggle, sometimes that's a physical struggle, sometimes that's a mental struggle, sometimes it's simply the ups and downs of of life or the journey that they've been on with other people. And and I would I would echo what you said, Tim, in terms of thinking about the people that ha- have shaped me. You know, it's the teachers. It, I think about the the folks. And and they weren't in the classroom teachers. Most of them that, that are coming to mind, not most of them, many of them were outside of the classroom who were my teachers and then were the ones that in the classroom were holding up a mirror and helping me to see something about myself. And then when I think about the congregations, you know, the, the faithful souls who walked in ministry, and I think this is easier when you're at a congregation for a long period of time because you're with people through different cycles of life. And so one of the gentlemen that I'm thinking of from the first congregation that I served had teenagers when I was a youth pastor. He was very involved with Boy Scouts, also had connections to Miami University where I attended and did a master's degree. And so there were all of these interconnected um, things that that we both had an interest about, but more than anything, he was one of the most faithful individuals that I ever knew and just asked thoughtful questions and had struggled through life with his health and specifically around his his kidneys and had to have a kidney transplant. And And like you described, Paul, John was one of those people There was always, there was a happiness and a joy about him just in his presence. And he could have been feeling like crap. And maybe it was just outwardly, but I don't think it it was because he just cared deeply about other people and he found joy in being present with people. So you see what happens when you start to talk about people who leave a legacy in in your life? You you can't stop talking because they've enriched your life in in some way. You know that might be I'm just thinking Sarah that that might be a way to start some of our meetings in churches or in other places. It's just beginning to Ask the question, who's somebody, who is someone who's had an impact upon you and, and, and that you begin to talk about it, it, it opens the door for hope, I think. That's the whole point. We're talking about hope. So as you've heard Tim and I talk about a few people that you likely know or have at least read about and a couple of people in our own lives that have left a legacy of hope. What do their legacies teach you about being a person of hope, a hope-filled leader? Sarah, you've just asked the question. One of the things that I think about the people who have been most important to me is that they didn't take themselves too seriously, but yet they were were serious and focused people. Well said. (laughs) Very well said. The other thing that... I recognize about many of the people who leave a legacy of hope is they fight like H-E double hockey sticks for what they believe in. 
they do not let down regardless of the resistance that that they face. One of the things that I've appreciated about the people who I feel like have impacted me or left that legacy is that they, they're people who listen. They actually hear what you're saying and there's empathy. Now they may not always agree, but they, but they listen, they take time. And one of the things I appreciate about some people who are just leaving that legacy upon me now is they're not judgmental. Again, they may not agree, but they're not passing judgment. They're listening. And then they ask the questions I need to answer to get to where I need to be. And, and maybe one more, and this is going to sound like a soundbite or a t-shirt or a bumper sticker, but I don't mean it that way. But they laugh and they love and they live each day as if it's all that they have. There's a certain passion and presence about the individuals that I'm thinking of. May I tell a story at this point what about one of those persons? Tim Bias, no, he can't tell a story. <laughs> of course, you can tell so, a story. I'd say this is the end of this episode. <laughs> one of the people who who have left that legacy for, with me and, and with whom I had a, a fruitful relationship was Fred Craddock. And I remember he was my homiletics professor, my preaching professor at Emory University. And I remember preaching my first sermon for him in class. And he invited me to come back to his office. Now, I thought that was important, but I think he invited all the students to come back to his office at one time or another. And this sounds like boasting. I, I don't mean to. It's just the way it happened. We talked about the sermon. He said, it's a good sermon, a good presentation, um, content, fine. He said that you're going to be, you're going to, you are a good preacher. You're going to be a good preacher. And so I'm feeling pretty good. Here's Fred Craddock telling me this kind of stuff. And then he looked at me and said, but you know, I'm not beyond lying. Within that laugh, love, and live are people who can, I don't think you could have that kind of humor with people if you're not in relationship with them. And yet it was that kind of comment, because that's just who he was, that actually offered hope. Because he had given me what I needed. He didn't take it away, but he let me know that there's more to it than just the good, the, the, the good words of support and encouragement. And that's what, that's what came with it. Yeah. And so I think all of that leads us to the question. I told you at the beginning, we were going to turn the tables on you. And so I'll just name it for you right here. To whom are you leaving a legacy? To whom are you leaving a legacy of hope? That's the best question we could answer or best question we could ask. It's really a great uh, question to answer because each of us have been entrusted to care for God's people. And sometimes, I, I'm going to say it this way, sometimes we limit those that are entrusted to our care if we're pastors or preachers to the congregation that we've been appointed. And sometimes we, we limit ourselves um, to only think we're leaving a legacy to the people with, with whom agree with us, the people who see it our way. Wonder what it would be like if we began to think about our legacy being as big as Betty White or Martin Luther King or Bonhoeffer, so that everything that we were saying or doing was leaving a mark that made the world more like God created it to be. When you ask that question, that's what comes to mind for me. Because then it's not only the people who are around me who are entrusted to my care, but it's when I go to the grocery store. And it's when I'm at the gas station. It's when I'm at a football game or a, bas a basketball game. Right. I'm leaving a legacy. It's how I vote. It's who I support in the political arena. And I, I'm not 
And not at all am I saying that our faith is to go one way or the other, but I would certainly hope that the legacy I leave, I would, people behind me would say, his politics was shaped by his faith more than his faith was shaped by his politics. You're giving our listeners some things to think about. <laughs> and so... Only you can answer that question, to whom are you leaving a legacy? And Tim, you've provided a way for us to, to reflect on that in our own life and, and not to wait until the end of life to think about it, but to begin leaving that legacy today. So thank you for that. I, I did leave out some people, and that is the, the, the folks who are parents Think about the legacy you're leaving for your children. I, I mean, we can, it's, it's wherever we are and, and, and whatever we're doing. If we're doing it in the love of God, as we were created to do, we're leaving a mark that allows the world to become more what God created it to be. I interrupted you. Stop me before I give an invitation. <laughs> I was just going to ask, Tim, is there an invitation? Anything else that you want to offer to wrap up this episode? I've added enough. Thank you. Let me remind you as you reflect on the the people and the questions that we have offered to you today about leaving a legacy of hope, that you can find those questions along with the additional show notes. And we may not have mentioned it yet on any of the episodes, we have started including an unedited version of the podcast in transcript form. So if you're one of those people that sometimes want to go back and look at what we were actually talking about in written form, you can now do that on the podcast page. And you can find all of those notes at transformingmission.org forward slash 216. And remember, who you are is how you lead. Bye for now.